Hey guys, today I am pumping water out of the dugout into this little trough that I have over there. So obviously the setup that we have right now for pumping water out of the dugout is not ideal. Um, but it's what we're using for now until we have time to fix up a better system. So ideally what I want is to be able to obviously pump water out of the dugout and not put it into a trough. I want to have it so that we can set up like some type of sprinkler system or we can use uh, maybe some longer hoses or set it up so that we can um, size it down for a garden hose. But anyways, I'm pumping water into the trough so for one, I can water my garden. And for two, I'm going to build a little electric fence pen over there for my horses since the trough is over there anyway and I can pump water into it from the dugout instead of having to haul water to them. So that's what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to go make them a pen with some electric fence and our solar energizer. And then they can eat some of that long grass over there because it's really tall and it might as well be eaten up. I know it's probably like a liability thing, but these are annoying on these electric fence stakes to get off. So if you're dumb enough to impale yourself on this, well, I'm sorry, but that's, that's not my problem. <laughs> these suck to get off. I just threw some sunflowers in here from our feed bag and man, did they go nuts. <laughs> I'm gonna have to thin those suckers out, but holy, they sure grow good. There's my little pen set up for the horses for now. They can eat up some of that grass. There, now my little fatties can enjoy some nice fresh grass. It is a hot one out there today, man. But I got lots of stuff accomplished today. I got the lawn mostly mowed. And I got water hauled because the water alarm went off. And I had someone message me today because I had made a post about how I hate hauling water. And if you've ever had to haul water, it's a pain in the butt. Anyway, um, they said, well, why don't you just dig a well? Well, I mean, yeah, that'd be great. But you chance not hitting water and paying like $30,000 to get a well dug. And the wells out in our area are not very good. You have to dig really, really deep if you hit water at all. And you still have to pay that price even if you don't hit water. So actually what our county is doing is supposed to be putting in a type of like pipeline with a trickle system so that our cistern will just automatically stay full. It has like a float in there. But obviously that's not installed yet, so we still have to haul water. And we have a dugout that we got last year that we plan to take water out of and put in a water lines all around the property with like frost-free hydrants and automatic water in the pasture. But it's been a busy summer and my husband's been working crazy, crazy long night shifts um, where he works. They're doing a shutdown of his gas plant. So he's still working nights and I'm taking care of the farm by myself. So obviously I'm just kind of in survival mode at this point and trying to get the necessities done. And so we haven't done any big, big projects since he's been doing that. But hopefully once he's done and rested up, we can kind of get started on that so that we don't have to haul water to the animals. We can just have it come out of the dugout. But again, a very expensive endeavor and a lot of work. So... It's cool to offer suggestions on the internet to people, but just remember that it's not as easy as it seems. Anyway, I smashed my car. I hit a deer on the highway when I was going to pick up my daughter. So that was fun. I've been dealing with that, um, dealing with insurance, and I don't know what's happening with my car yet, if it's getting rolled off or if they're going to fix it. 
I personally don't think it's damaged that bad, but you know how it is with that. Sometimes those things just add up to a bigger cost than you thought. So we'll see what happens there. I'm kind of sad that my car got wrecked because I really, really liked my SUV. Um, so I hope that it can be fixed and I don't have to get a different one. But for now, I have a loaner car that I use just for my like daily driver um, for when I don't need the truck. And yeah, otherwise, I've been busy, busy, busy doing lots of stuff on the farm and keeping this place going pretty much by myself. It's also been kind of stressful again over here because we had some pretty big wildfires not far from us again. They were just west of us, about 18 kilometers, um, just over the hills, and they were out of control and moving fast, and it was really windy. And of course, it's been really dry here, so that was quite concerning and worrisome. But the wind changed for a couple days, and I think it backburned on itself, and we had lots of like helicopters and firefighters working on it so I think for the time being it seems to be under control and we seem to be safe again the smoke situation has definitely died down so yeah but that was that was fun on top of everything else you're worrying about what if we have to evacuate what if our place burns down it's been a rough rough summer for wildfires Guys, the little toad. He's so cute. Me and my daughter are still recovering from a nasty cold, and so that's been fun. We took our mare, Hazel, up to get bred last week by a Gypsy Vanner Stallion. So I'm hopeful that next spring we will have an awesome little halflinger cross Gypsy Vanner foal, our first foal born on our ranch, um, with the genetic testing that we've done on our mare and the genetic testing that's been done on the stallion. Um, really, the only option is for it to be a Tobiano, either a Bay Tobiano or a Chestnut Tobiano. So that'll be exciting to see what comes of that. And I'm not going to get my hopes up too much because our breeding plans have been just kind of a disaster <laughs> the last year. So I know things can go wrong. So I'm just going to just have a little shimmer, a little glimmer of hope that that does work out. Because I've been wanting to do that for years and I'm very, very excited to see what comes out of that cross. So we'll bring her home in a couple months and hopefully she's caught and we'll have a baby next year. The coyotes have really taken a notice of the cow and calf being out in the field now. And thank goodness we have livestock guardian dogs. You don't realize how much you need them until you need them. And they do a great job of making sure everything's safe. You might not be able to hear, but we have one guardian dog out with the cow barking at the coyote and one kind of closer to home. This was a different night, but we had all three dogs out there chasing coyotes. <laughs> 